All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see, the Cooster here is pretty much fully assembled, minus uh, a couple parts there still in the box that need to go on. Mostly just kind of a couple little parts here on the legs. Uh, but everything is all together. A lot of everything's kind of glued in place, of course. So we have just kind of a couple of main sections. Let me show you guys this. This would be kind of like uh, the head section. Everything, for the most part, is all just glued in place here. You have like these little bars here. In the manual, I'll just show this to you guys here because it's kind of interesting. For example, right here, it shows you the exact piece, and but this is like a one-to-one -one scale illustration of that. So if you wanted to use an actual wire, all you have to do is just like lay it onto this actual like uh, drawing here on the manual. And what you can do, and I've seen people do this online too, is they'll make like a cut a sheet of uh, plot plate. Uh, to be like a sort of a jig for this, so just like tr tracing it on here, and you can just bend the wire around that to make your own wire. But I just stuck with all the plastic parts. I think the plastic parts should be fine. I think metal parts, of course, would be more secure. You don't have to worry so much about breaking them. Otherwise, I'm not really sure exactly what necessarily would be the benefit because it's once it gets painted, whether it's plastic or metal underneath. Like who's to say, really? But as long as nothing breaks, the plastic will just be fine for me. So all these little bits. Uh, these little things here and all that's just all plastic. So this is all glued in place. The seam line is pretty much removed for the most part. Once we get some primer on there, I'll see if I need to do anything more with that, but I think it's probably fine. Uh, and then the lower section here, just have like all the engine section there at the back, the leg stabilizers and all of that and the legs. And so there is some movement here in the legs, some of the joints kind of move. And I want it to be sat kind of low because I'm planning to have it displayed in sort of just like kind of a crouching, resting position, not like walking or uh, like, I don't know, fighting or anything like that. So everything's on here. There are a couple of plates here which kind of go all over the side of the leg and like here on the front. Those are not on there yet because that's where it comes to the um, modifications that I want to make to this. And so I was thinking it would be fun to put some arms on this because it's got legs and then you got kind of some space enough here to maybe attach some arms onto it as well. And so I was thinking at first to just like scratch build some arms just using some like scrap pieces of HG Gundam kits or something like that. And then I had the idea of maybe using one of these guys, our little Mechatro Ego kits. And this is the 120 scale Mechatro version that came with the uh, hand scale Gorai kit, for example. And I thought just the, the general shapes of this kind of match uh, what we got going on here with the Cooster. I'll just pull out the illustration card again here. Like on the front of the legs, you have these kind of rounded pieces there. And you got kind of, in general, just these rounded uh, sections of armor that go on the front of the leg as well too. So this one also arm has some kind of just rounded sections of armor. Now I think what I'm probably going to end up doing too is probably trimming these a little bit uh, to just make some of these armor segments a little bit smaller or just kind of in general more properly shaped to the Machine and Krieger styling here. So I'll work on those a little bit but basically the arms will just be attached on here to the kind of the side of the head, the side of the main I guess chassis of that. And so those will be attached onto there. And then I don't want to do just the arms. So I think what I'm also going to do is use some of these arm leg armor sections here of the Mechatro, like this one here from the side of the leg, uh, should fit pretty close to right over the side of the leg here. Now, again, I'll have to do a little bit of work on this to get it actually on there. But once this is on there, that'll kind of go over the side of the leg here. And then there will be the armor panel in the front of there as well too from the Cooster kit. I'll add onto that. And then also down here, a little bit further down on the leg, I wanna take this armor off the shin of, of the Mechatro kit and add that down near here, closer to the end of the ankle there. And there'll be another, once again, another rounded part around there on the end of that as well too. So I, this one as well too, I'll, I'll cut to have this trimmed to be kind of more proper to the shape of this as it is now it just kind of looks like the shape is weird doesn't like quite match on there so i'll have to do some trimming on these armor parts to make them match but basically i'll need to use these parts all of the mechatro kit and so this poor guy without any arms and leg armor will just have to go into the uh, scratch parts bin for the time being until I can find some way to modify him with some new arms and leg parts and stuff. That'll be a fun thing to use just for a future project, but for now, he's served his purpose, giving us these parts we're going to need for this guy. But one other thing too I do also want to add is, uh, well, first of all, I am going to need a hand from this set here. For my plans is the uh, MSG modeling sport goods hand option set. We'll need a hand from that. But more importantly, we'll need the weapon here from this. So what is this? This is the water arms set. It's basically like this uh, 
super soaker, a squirt gun, and then this like compressor airbrush kind of looking weapon thing there. Uh, I did a review on this, I did a video on this uh, weapon set previously if you want to check that out if you missed it, but uh, I was thinking about this armor panel here on the side of the cooster. It's got this panel that's meant to cover up this side here, and I was thinking it's just kind of a shame because you got some nice detail up in there. So I was thinking to just have this panel open, and I just have to modify this to just uh, scratch build some like little connection bits to make it look like this hatch is open like that. But that would look pretty cool. But then while I was thinking about uh, what I wanted to do with this and just uh, going through my Kodobuki option parts and stuff, I realized this uh, compressor section of this would is gonna fit like just right, perfectly right up inside this section here and then you can just be on one of his arms holding on to the airbrush section of that. So this is not going to be something quite as serious as Machine Krieger usually is. Giving it this like compressor and airbrush and arms for weapons I think is gonna, just gonna make this a lot more kind of fun and playful kind of looking and so I think that'll be I think all equally in as enjoyable for this kit. And, you know, next time, next Machine and Career Kit, we can do it a bit more serious, right? Giving it all the proper stuff. But this one I wanted to have some fun with. So uh, it's going to be a mix of Wave Kit plus Hasegawa parts plus Kotobukiya parts. And uh, oh, we, get, we need something from Bandai as well, too. And that's where the Balden Arm, arm set is going to come in. We'll rely on Bandai for a few option connection parts too because we need a way to connect the arms onto the body and these are just fit on uh, just via a ball joint onto the mecha truck kit and this set comes with some ball joints that we can use that should fit just right so here on the runner here get these ball joint bits so basically all I need to do is just drill a hole into the side of the cooster stick this one into there and then I've got my ball joint attachment that I can then attach the arm onto so it shouldn't be too difficult so let's go ahead and just get right to it the first thing I need to do is just uh, pull off one of these I need to make sure test this is going to be the right size it looks like it should fit just right so let me just make sure yep that fits into there just perfectly so now we just need to figure out the placement of where this needs to go so I can drill my holes here onto the side of the body Oh yeah, and one other thing too here on the cooster is that it's got this little uh, kind of radar thing here that's meant to go up on the top, and it's, a little, it's I mean it's fine, it's a little bit boring. So I've been thinking about the reason why I haven't put this on here yet. So I'm thinking about if I really want to stick that on there or do something else, and I'm thinking now that maybe this missile pod from the Balden Arms set also might look good up on top of there. Just stick a missile pod up on the top. I, I kind of don't want to overdo it, just adding too much to this. Like I want to add what I want to add to it, but not like really force anything. So I'm still not sure about that if I want to add the missile pod onto the top of there or just stick with this regular, just kind of uh, radar guy or something else. I'm not sure, not entirely decided on that one quite yet. And the reason I mentioned too that I'm going to need this handset is because uh, the Mechatro kit does come with some different option hands. It does come with a holding hand here, but it's just kind of a straight on one. What you have included with this set is you have a holding hand that's uh, with the wrist at an angle. So I think that'll be better or maybe, uh, I was hoping maybe I could just switch the wrist part, but it looks like I'll have to find the part here and I think maybe I already used that hand from this set. Luckily I do have another set of this on hand, no pun intended. Oh, oops, and it uh, actually turns out the other set that I have also is missing the hand that I need because I used one from one set for my Tristan and I used one from the other set for my frame arms kit that I built. Uh, so unfortunately, I, I will just have to use, I suppose, the hand that we have included with this. But actually, I think it's going to be fine. They're just the regular hand, not the bent wrist version of that. I could also modify that if I really wanted to. Even the arm holds onto the weapon just fine there, so I think it's going to be all right. Now for this part, it actually comes with this little connection piece which will come in handy, that'll be exactly what we need. And so I just need to kind of check where this will fit up into there just right and it looks like about like that. So actually I already just checked it just now and went ahead and marked the spot for that. So it's just a matter of drilling out a new hole here for that connection piece. And there we go, that's fit into there like that. I mean, look at that, that looks like so, so perfect, like it's made for it. And obviously the colors don't match, but I think once this is painted, it's gonna look so good like that, just like there, how it is. So really, really happy with how that just was a perfect fit for that, I think. Now, for the arms, like I said, I think the tricky part is gonna be making sure that I had them matched side to side. So I'm gonna have to do my best to eyeball this because there's not really any good a symmetrical point to like kind of measure from or anything so I'll just have to try to do my best here with this. 
All right, I think I've got that just about set. So once again, just on a side note, I'm using the always handy drill set here, the Mr. Hobby US Gunham Store collaboration drill set. So these as well are also just gonna be as simple as putting a couple holes in here for those arms to plug in, and that's gonna be really about it. I could add a little bit of more greeble action in there possibly, so I'm still thinking about that, like maybe or just around where the arm plugs in. I'm thinking the arm plugging in there is gonna be pretty close. There's not gonna be much room for that, like here, for example, you can see on the legs, where the legs plugged into the body, there's like, so you can see like some kind of mechanical stuff in there like that a little bit, but that's gonna kind of be covered up for the most part as well too. So I think we'll probably be fine just without worrying too much about that. Oh, right, there it is. I think I'm really liking this, how this is coming out. It's definitely getting a bit heavy for the joints. Now I'll have to start gluing some of these joints in place on the legs so that it can stand up. Uh, but you guys can get the idea. I wanted the arms to be kind of more towards the front and just kind of like a little bit down, sort of similar to, uh, what was that? The uh, HG Wadam pod, that's what it was. Yes, it kind of has a very similar sort of feel to that, I feel like. So I wanted the arms to look sort of like that. So there we go, there's the general look of that. Now, uh, it's just gonna be, like I said, now it's, that's kind of like everything fits in place. Now I just need to modify these armor bits to fit onto there. Uh, and then a couple other armor bits of the Cooster to fit onto there. So let me go ahead and work on that and then I'll come back and let you guys know how that's going. All right, so it took quite a lot of shaving, cutting, and trying that out, but I finally got that to fit on there pretty good over the top of the leg. Uh, so that's how that goes. It's a little bit loose on there right now, but you should be able to just remove that off there like that. So there was like a circular detail here on the side of the leg. I just had to shave that down. And I also needed to kind of just cut this in a way to that it would just fit around there and also make room for where the spring is attached there onto the side of the leg as well too. So just to compare to the original piece, you can see I had to cut out this bottom section. Also the front part is cut down and uh, cut to a more just curved shape instead of having those hard angles. And this side had to cut out uh, like a, just a section of the side of that as well too, just to make this section larger. So that's that. Also uh, adding this part here down onto the lower leg. And that's gonna go there. And then the other kind of circular bit that was on the ankle of the Mechatro is gonna go on right there. So I need to cut off this little detail on the side of there. Not only cut that off, but then also I need to file that down flat as well too. So there's that little bit, which is actually kind of ironic because that was the extra little detail piece that you had to glue in there. And now I'm just cutting it back off again. But, and then really simply, this circle part will just be glued right onto the side of that. And then also we have, this is the, the armor piece that is meant to go like on the front of here. Uh, but I wanted it to kind of match the shape of that a little bit better. So I cut the top of that, just make it kind of more curved. So I'll just be reshaping the Cooster's armor pieces here a little bit as well too. And then these are the pieces that I was mentioning that go like on the front of the leg up inside of there as well too. So overall, I think one thing that I didn't really have in mind, I didn't really have planned for this, but I'm, now that I'm kind of, now that it's taking shape, I'm just kind of seeing how well it's working out is that it's giving it a much more heavily armored feel. It just looks like this like a heavy armored Cooster, which is looking very cool, which is a very different look from just the, the original kit. The original kit is just kind of very wiry, kind of like a chicken. It's got these like really thin chicken legs, but adding a bunch of armor onto the legs, bulking it out, and then giving it these big arms as well too, gives it a much more bulkier, more heavily armored tank sort of look to it. So very cool. This piece, not this piece, not really glued on there yet, quite yet. But you can see too how I this is the one that I cut to just make it a little bit more shapely to fit onto there, rather than having these kind of hard edges like that that just look like they are meant to blow onto something else. That's not this kit. So I just cut around the armor to make it more uh, appropriate in its shape. I think. All right, so here's kind of everything all laid out. It's pretty much done for like the main modifications anyway. There's still a few bits that I need to do. I still need to figure out what I'm gonna do for the radar there on the top. Also gonna add some little wires in here behind the smoke launchers. Also place the smoke launchers here. Once I place the arms, I realized, oh yeah, that's not really gonna leave much room for the smoke launchers, which are supposed to be right here. So it's either squeeze them in right in front of the arms or just put them right up, up here, up behind the arms, which I think just works perfectly fine as well too. So actually really like how those ended up just being placed up there as well too. Uh, this armor here on the back of the arm trimmed that to make it more round, added a little bit there to make a hole for uh, this uh, spring detail to be added. Also added a hole up into the bottom of this arm as well too. It's a little bit too far out. I'll probably tighten that up a little bit later on. 
Same with this hose here for the spray gun. I'll sort something out with that out. I'll probably use a spring for this one as well too instead of this rubber hose that's included with that kit. Uh, and then just the armor parts trimmed and sanded up, seam lined removed on some of these parts here as well too. Uh, to be just about the shape where I think I want them. And I think really, I really like how these parts there fit around the ankles as well too. It's quite nice. So like I said, it does add, or it just gives it a much more kind of bulky uh, armored feel. And I also added the big armor plates up in here, up like in front of the legs in there also, as you can see. Um, so yeah, pretty much everything is in place, all the main sections. I'll probably go in and add a few other little bits. We have uh, some more little like screw detail parts. I'm gonna be add to some of these parts in here as well too. And other little detail parts I'll add to it. But for the most part, everything is kind of done. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. How's it looking so far? My custom cooster, super cooster, I guess maybe is what I'll have to call it something along those lines. Uh, so just a little bit more work on this and then it'll be time to paint it, which will be fun. I've got a cool idea how to do that as well. We'll be painting it by hand, the machining Krieger style. Uh, but I'll be doing it something a little bit more interesting in the way of colors. So we'll talk more about that, I guess, in the next video. Uh, but for now, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions about any of this, of course, do feel free to let me know down in the comment section down below. And like I said, just let me know what you're thinking about it so far. What do you like? What do you dislike about it? Always open to hear you guys' uh, thoughts and critiques. So just let me know down there. And as always, guys, once again, big thank you to USA Gundam Store for making it all possible. Machine and Krieger stuff and Mechatro stuff all available there at USA Gundam Store, of course. So you can check the link down below and check out the site. You can save 10% off everything using my coupon code there, Zacharelius10, so check that out in case you want to try out some of this stuff on your own. And until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.